welcome back to the YTG podcast. If welcome. you are new here, my name is Nico. I'm an automotive photographer and now amateur racing driver. I'm Sean and uh, I am the owner of this lovely shed in Keysborough. YTG Young Timers Garage. Here Welcome. on the the weekly ish YTG podcast, uh, yes. we're going to give you uh, the sort of inside scoop inside the automotive industry in Australia, as well as some fantastic stories, mm-hmm. motorsport, uh, anything car, car related. related. So uh, and a bit of electric car hate. <laughs> uh, so yeah, yeah, join us on another episode, and uh, we hope you enjoy. Welcome back to another episode of the YTG hey. podcast. We've been making your wait in between recordings a bit lately. What's been happening? It's, it's been busy. It's been busy. Yeah, um, been going on. So we're going to kick things off with the most important uh, bit of information, which is, of course, my fashion choices um, and my hat, which, as you'll see, is not YTG this week. It says Muscle Car Warehouse, which, for those who don't know, is a dealership in Sydney. That we partnered up with. Uh, that's our... Uh, uh, our uh, partners now in Sydney we we, uh, we lost a dear friend uh, which was uh, uh, Perry's right hand man who was a good friend of ours in the short term we met him and uh, he was an absolute gentleman uh, Dennis Zanos and um, sadly he passed away uh, a, a few days ago so um, yeah it's a tragic he was only down here a couple of weeks ago picking up a yeah. car with him and having a bite to eat but he was an absolute absolute gentleman in the short time we've known him mate so fuck we're gonna miss you heaps and uh our, our deepest uh, condolences uh to to the xenos family and obviously the muscle car warehouse family uh particularly perry i mean you guys were mates uh, since like 15 or so so yeah um yeah massive loss massive loss fuck we're losing some good people of late so um yeah mate very sorry to all this Tragic news, mate. So yeah, so that's a little just tribute to uh, to Dennis, mate. So yeah, that's it. Well that's done. it. Thought we'd honour him. Um, flying up there tomorrow, so it'll be interesting to catch, yeah, up, catch with up with the guys. Very, and, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so yeah, on to more happy news. Um, we'll move on to our recap of Mailing Road because, yeah, of course, we've, this is, we're filming this just after Mailing Road, yep. um, which was a fantastic show. If you didn't make awesome. it down, there's some. Awesome cars there. Awesome. All the big names are there. Uh, I think they great. said 20,000 yeah, people yeah, came through, yeah. which was unbelievable. Yeah, well It's done a to tiny Peter. little street. So with that many people in there, you couldn't move. <laughs> it was crazy. It was, uh, yeah, it was it was fantastic. And Peter, congratulations <laughs> to the whole crew down there, really. They did a great job. Yeah, it was awesome. Uh, I've been sort of blessed to be a part of it now for the last couple of years. Obviously, did a lot with the Duttons and then... Um, yeah, we went on our own, and uh, it was great to see the crew there. And yeah, it was uh, brilliantly received. Hello to all the people that came past, said hello, and uh, watched the podcast and loved the cars. We we took some epic cars, we took the XJ220, and we took the Dodge Viper launch edition, which was fantastic. That was really, really well received. And that's thank you to you guys. You guys uh, picked the cars. Well, the Michelago or that, we weren't sure. We weren't sure of the weather. So, and as you know, Michelago, you need a astrophysics degree. To put the roof on. To it. put the roof yeah. on. So, <laughs> um, yeah, fuck, that wasn't easy. So we took the Viper and it went off amaz- amazingly. So, uh, yeah, it was a great, great event, great event. They were really pleased. It was when Peter said that they were knocking back people, that's always a good sign. Yeah. So uh, good diversity. Um, we were a sponsor, so that was good, eh? So it was a uh, yeah, we were yeah. sponsor and we gave out – all the sponsors had a variety of uh, – Awards to give out. Yep. And we were the best restoration, wasn't it? Best restoration, yeah. which I think is potentially the hardest award to pick. Yeah, and it was purely on us. So, yeah. so Nico, Liam, and I were, were scouring the the, 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 the the car show and just. Yeah. Because it's not of, just the quality of the cars. Yeah. You've got to talk to the person and find out how much effort was put into yeah. it, you know, all that and sort of stuff. It's a bit different to someone who just goes and pays squillions of dollars and gets someone to do it purely at arm's length and comes yeah. and checks on something. Yeah. Um, as opposed to some of that, you know, elbow grease, get involved and actually did a lot of the work. So and that that added a lot of weight too. So, um, yeah, it was great, 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 great privilege for us to, to, to pick that. That was a pretty, pretty, pretty cool award to pick. Yeah. So what did we, what did we land on? We landed on a 68... Uh, Morris Cooper S or a Mini Cooper S. Yeah, 100%. And no one would fucking believe that we were going to pick that. Yeah. Everyone just assumed we'd pick a Ferrari, a Lambo or something exotic-y. Um, and uh, we didn't. 
you know. Yeah, it, it was the oddball pick. It, yeah, it was yeah. the oddball pick. But but a lot of people said uh, great, yeah, great, great right. choice. When yeah yeah when you know we were walking around looking at all the cars and we were trying to work it out and um yeah the mini by chance one of my dearest clients it was a friend of his and and, and he goes just see the mini and we were looking at the minis but um there was another one that looked quite nice too but when we stopped and spoke and 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 and, and talked to uh jeff wasn't it uh, jim, jim 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 sorry jim um about the car and the detail and, and the you know the guy he, he's as passionate as the bloke that restores a Countach periscope, yeah. which is, you know, $1 million, $2 million car. Um, so to me, yeah, he deserved it. And the car was, you know, you think about how many Mini Cooper S's are in the world, yeah? And, all, yeah. and, and I'm sure everyone believes their car is the best car, and, and that's cool. a cool thing with classic cars. But when you're on the front cover of Mini World, which is the UK, like the aficionado of Minis, um, that's pretty special. Yeah. Of all yeah. the fucking minis in the world, they could have chosen. And so, yeah, car, original plates, Aussie car. Like, so, yeah, that, that – and, and I remember when we were talking to the the, the other – the panel there because we had to give them so they wouldn't double up because obviously there was other cars, obviously, yeah. familiarity, so we didn't, no one wanted to double up. And, um, yeah, they were all very pleased when they saw what we yeah. nominated. Yeah, Because, again, I think everyone thought, though, you know, you might choose something more exotic. Yeah. But, no, it was great. And he was – Absolutely wrapped. He did not fucking see it coming. No, he didn't. Yeah, 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 that's good. He really was really good. happy. Yeah, really, really good. So, yeah, it's on our social pages. You'll see the, us giving the ward out. And, um, yeah, it was good. It was a great day. Very, very great day. It was great to get the feedback. Thank you to all that came up and said hello and loved your podcasts and things like that. So that yeah, was quite, a couple that of was people good. talking yeah. about the podcast. Yeah, <laughs> it was really good. So I was very pleased. And actually, husbands and wives are you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. Um, and, and yeah, it was actually, it was actually quite, yeah, it was quite humbling to see that. So thank you. It was very good. It uh, was. A lot of people saw it. So uh, great turnout. Great to see the old Dutton crew there. Uh, it was good to see a few of my old crew. Um, yeah, obviously, fuck, shitloads of clients. I mean, mm. God, got to a stage you, you couldn't walk. Mate, you and I both it could, literally just, just could Every three steps. Honestly, it was, it was. It was, it was someone else. It was oh, very, hey, go- it was, yeah, it was very, very humbling. It was, just fuck you yeah, just honestly and then you're talking and hey, so yeah thank you all uh yeah. for coming and saying hello and, and uh it was just great great yeah, yeah, great yeah. then the cars caused a lot of theater when they were leaving yeah a lot of commotion uh we didn't take off silly we just you know just drove them nice and easy but just the theater of those cars on the road yeah it was really yeah. good so we trucked them there trucked them back uh thanks to uh chris spectrum and Steve, uh, they're our partners for all yeah. the local stuff. We well, so hit them up were, very last minute for a second tow yeah, truck. Yeah, um, yeah, it was last minute because <laughs> they were going to drive the Lambo in, and then it was just worried about well, the weather. Well, that's a funny story. So, shit. so we're going to take the Lambo up Liam until flew up in until from New the day as well. before we were going to bring the Mercia Lago that we did all the scene through glass stuff. Yeah, the roads the one. Yeah. That was the plan. Then the weather was looking a bit iffy, and the Lambo has no roof, obviously. Well, um, yeah, and then Liam well. goes, oh. Why not something a bit different? Maybe the Viper. And we're all saying they're going, you know what? That Viper, it's yeah. a really cool car. Yeah. And there is no way in hell there is going to be another Viper at this show tomorrow. And, <laughs> and then what, what was it the fucking- Bettina stands? <laughs> so that cunt's got a fucking periscope. <laughs> <laughs> Another Viper. Oh, like what the are the there. chances? What are there? Oh, so, my yeah, that gosh. was funny. So, um, yeah, so they rocked up with a Viper and, um, uh, yeah, so it was it, it, it was uh, quite funny of all the cars. So. Did you see the post in um, exotic car spotting when the cars were getting picked up down the Across road? Across the road, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It that went off. Man. Yeah. It's like 400 likes. It yeah, it was great. Comments for yeah. days. People were going, good. what makes the Viper one of one? And <laughs> Yeah, I know. It was quite funny. And and if you want to know why they Vipers one one if you don't know already, you can go to the website. And uh, it is the last proper GDS. It was the launch edition. It runs the 8.4, so the absolute last of the, the, the Viper trilogy or the Viper trilogy. Um, they only made 150 of them. They only came in blue with white stripe. And the car we're fortunate to have is build number three, which is actually technically one of one, which is the only one out of the 150 to be built, which has the full carbon exterior package. And that's with the letter signed by the Fiat Chrysler uh, president at the time, 
Um, so, yeah, pretty significant car. So uh, we've got a few people on it, but the problem is that we've got, like like anything, you know, um, we try to find clean deals because it's very, you know, it's hard to The number to get. of people who want to trade stuff. Fuck it, yeah. oh, mate. if anyone's wanting a 94 Viper, well, call me because I've got three 94 Vipers that the gentlemen want to trade. On this <laughs> people point. just want to trade them in. They want to trade other Viper into this Viper, which is cool, but I don't want another Viper, you know what yep. I mean? So in saying that, um, yeah, and we're close to doing a deal on the ACR, which is really cool. Um, but, yeah, look, at that, that was uh, that was well received, yeah. It was really Michelle. I think the the XJ220, no one could walk past that without looking I, at it. I was actually quite taken back. It just goes to show you how fucking immune we are to shit. 100%. Um, and like, I remember when I fir- when that fir- car first came in yeah, and yeah. I saw it for the first time. First time ever seeing it. And it yeah. was just like, what is this spaceship? Like, From 94 whoa. or 92 to 90. I mean, like, it, yeah, it's it. And the amount of people that, one, have never seen one in the flesh. Yeah, 100%. Two... Some people did not even have a clue what it was, apart from that's a Jaguar. What is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, I think I've heard of that before. Uh huh. So, yeah, I was actually quite taken back at how many people it was like a fucking UFO. Yeah, yeah. I think I think we maybe need to do a little bit more of that philanthropy style. You know, getting people around the cars because yeah, it needs to be done. Yeah, especially with a lot of this stuff here. I mean, again, people keep saying, "Oh, you know, you should open to the public, let more people come in." No. That's, that's, that's not happening. tough. That's, that's tough. not happening. Yeah. It's not happening. I'll yeah. never, no, I won't open the public. Not for any more reason. And it just, we just can't service just people just walking no, in and no, out. You just, need, just, you can't need do it. 12 staff I just, just can't, to handle. I just can't do it. We no. just can't. So, and then, look, our clients like it that way too. This is nothing elitist. It just is able to be controlled. Yeah. Um, so we're open to everyone. Don't give a fuck you where you live or whatever. Just, all you have to do is, Hello, I'd like to make an appointment, please. Yeah. That's it. I mean, 70% of our business is over the phone anyways. But, you know, if you're even if you're coming down from interstate and you'd like to see the place and, look, we're very humble. We People come and knock on the door. They just want to have a look at the place because they're coming from interstate. Please, we are welcoming. What we mean by we are not open to the public means the doors aren't just open like when I ran Dutton's or Ferrari. Yeah, or, which are very much public spaces. Yeah. They just come in at, to the point where it got too much. Yeah. It was. Honestly, it got too much. It was ridiculous. So, you know, but, you know, I had fucking crew of staff. We Correct. just can't yeah, do that. Yeah, so, yeah. no, that's the reason why. It's just, yeah, it's yeah. just easier. I yeah. can spend time with you. You know what I mean? Exactly right. And we can go through what you want yeah. and go through the needs because this is a very special part of the industry. So, in saying that, so, yeah, a lot of people say, oh, okay, no, no, no. But, you know, like I said, we had a fantastic Porsche Club event, you know. Um, that was cool. That was really good. We had a great, they're, 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 uh, this is a second time now, isn't it? Second time, yeah. yeah and so, man, they show it with some cars. <laughs> mate, they were, and, and again, you know, they were all excited about coming here. And the crazy thing was, I didn't, we didn't know this, but the whole weekend was Porsche related. It was like a global thing. Yeah, so yeah. global Porsche thing. They all, all, all the, the dealerships. dealerships over this particular weekend were like a, like a cars and coffee open, motorsport, fucking Arguably the worst heritage. time to be hosting another Porsche event. <laughs> and I mean, they chose the event, so- we're like, we didn't even realise because I felt bad, but I mean, because, you know, um, technically Penske now, uh, Brighton Porsche and Doncaster yeah. lease uh, factory office. Oh, they team. do. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they had, Doncaster had, then Melbourne had on the Saturday and then Sunday, Brighton Cars and Coffee and all that sort of stuff. Yep. But it was funny because 50% of the people went there where they had a, and left because they said, don't block our cars because we're going to buy these cars <laughs> oops, and coffee. Oops. <laughs> Porsche cars, Victoria. And they're like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And so, mate, I feel bad because they, I'm getting told this. They're yeah, going, yeah, yeah. Mate, everyone just fucking left. And they're like, <laughs> cavalcades of cars is leaving. And they're like, bye. <laughs> and we're like, hang on, we didn't choose it. We didn't nah, know. Porsche club event. But, um, again, we're very humbled. I mean, it, mate, there was 300 people. Mate, goes to show the power of the Porsche Club. That is a that is a passionate bunch of people. As much as we will rag on Porsche Club and VW Club occasionally no, on the, the weird guys. No, really? No, I don't. No, really, I don't. I've never rag. I mean, I'll rag on fucking clubs. I fucking don't give a shit. That's the way it is. But the, the purists that, can be interesting. But that yeah, club, but that's with it's anything. full I mean, of a lot of passionate yeah, people. I actually, out of all the clubs, 
Mate, they've been fucking grouse. That's I mean, why we choose to work with yeah, them. Yeah, right? 100%. Whereas other clubs, we don't, and they know that. Yeah. And for our reasons. But in saying that, yeah, they were awesome, mate. And But the good thing is they really, really appreciated, obviously, the diversity. We were running quite a heavy lot of Porsches at the time, too. Yeah. Um, this so showroom really was worked. basically all Porsches. It was just all fucking Porsches. <laughs> it was just the way it worked. Um, and, and, you know, we had some beautiful cars that sadly, I mean, greatly were sold, but sadly went here on display. Mm. You know, so, but in saying that, um, yeah, great event. Fred put on his thing and, and uh, mate, they were fucking all the way down, all down, the, way down the sound. Down the point, yeah. So they, even the, again, uh, Clyde, thank you uh, for uh, choosing us again. We're going to have another event towards the end of the year, we're oh, hoping. Cool. Um, and uh, again, it was well received. Thank you all for coming. Uh, it was a fantastic event. The sun was out. It was great. We were very lucky that way. Um, uh, we had the best, I mean, we had, what, five or six current GD3 RS is parked at the front of the line. Yeah. Uh, JT, thank you, Captain, for coming and leaving you all here. Um, it just looked amazing. He just picked it up during the week. It was like 100 kilometres on it. Oh, nice. Yeah, that YSAC, the one that was yeah. here. So it was great. It was just great diversity. I mean, unfortunately, we had a couple of fridges, but I don't normally – I wouldn't <laughs> have normally allow it, but I was asked, and you can see it on my post when I'm walking around, and I was like mm. – there's some fridges <laughs> over there and just kept walking. Um, and I remember saying that. I was like, what? And I go, you know what I'm about. And they're like, look, do you mind? I was like, well, oh, fucking put them over there. Sort yeah. of thing. So anyway, so yeah, that was about, that was the only downer. <laughs> Not downer, but yeah, a bit of fun. But yeah, no, it was great. Everyone, and then they had the model shoot. They were doing photos and yeah, you know, yeah, where yeah. they came from. And then, yeah. then all those bikes turned up. There was like fucking what the. Oh, okay. Oh, you weren't here, were I you? I wasn't here. I Fuck, missed that's it. that's right. You totally were. That's right. I forgot. Yeah, because then, uh, as usual, it's 9 to 11. We had cars here at 8. <laughs> we were at 7.30. Yeah. And cars were coming. The first car was here at quarter to 8. Yeah. And it started at 9. Yeah. And the joint was packed before 9. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was like, okay. <laughs> okay, and then as usual, <laughs> they're like, okay, and then so the committee wanted certain car rows and packed in certain mm. ways, you know, the usual stuff. But then some people get their nose out of joint. Well, hang on, why is that for nine elevens? Why I have my cave in here or is that? And you're like, oh man, hang on, I don't fucking this is Switzerland, man. There's no fucking politics here. Mate. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. just get told that we, it's your event at our place, mate. You yeah, hundred percent. We're showcasing all our Porsches, and that's the way it is. But in saying that, so again, great day, great event, great diversity. Uh, Really good vibe. Other people just turning up to look. Love the cars. You know, everyone out with their dogs. And it was just a great morning. Really, really good morning. Uh, well done to the young guy. That's right. You got on. That's right. That's yeah, right. Yeah, Sam. Sam. Sam Cohen, yeah. Yeah, he did a great job. Um, and uh, he did the socials while Nico was racing. Yeah, I was away racing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So got him in to come and do the photos and videos. So, yeah, so sometimes when Nico's busy or whatever, we might – get one of the guys that we work with. So um, I think someone else just contacted us, wants to do some work with us. Yeah, Jaden Alvarez yeah. Media. He's yeah. the guy that um, shot Dutton for a while recently. Sort of at the same oh, my, same oh, sort of time, time when we were leaving Lorbeck, I think Dutton <sighs> brought him Don't in. Don't mention that fucking name. Um, um, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, he's good, yeah. He's a good photographer. Sieg. Good photographer. Coney Sieg, Pin and Frona. Coney Sieg, yeah. Leaving. yeah. Just happened to be in the fucking joint. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so... Um, yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, no, good job. Very happy with great work, yeah. mate. No, great no, work, we do love work. sharing the love around with some of the, you know, the good functioning photographers around. Yeah, I know Sam wanted to do something again. I saw that yep. she's back now. Yeah. Um, and, um, yeah, no, like I said, it was, that, was a, that was a pretty packed full on. Um, then you're off to the bend next this week. Yeah, next week. yeah. So, so what, next my, what my- What day is it today? Fuck. Jeez, what is it? Wednesday. What day is it today? Yeah, Wednesday. It's Wednesday. Yeah. 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 So, so next week. Next week. Yeah. Is it Wednesday today? It's Wednesday today. Yeah. It is yeah. Wednesday so today. Ten days. Fuck. Ten days. Okay. So yeah. Okay. Cool. Because we're going to Adelaide. Yeah. Tuesday. Yeah. Anyway. So anyway. So yeah. It's a, a lot, lot happening. Fuck. There's a lot. A lot. Lot. Lot going on. Yeah. Lot, lot, yeah. Lot going on. Yeah. I'm flying up to Adelaide on Tuesday. Back Tuesday night to wake yeah. up. Wednesday, to, Thursday to morning drive. to drive to Adelaide. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're going to Adelaide on an expedition. Um, and, uh, yeah, stay tuned. There's some 
exciting things. Hopefully happening. some big news. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll see. see. We'll, see. Goes, well yeah. that's just the door that we're knocking on or knocked on us. Uh-huh. And we'll just go for that. So, yeah, so it's good things happening. So, to close so. off the Mailing Road <laughs> mailing conversation, road. what was your favourite car of the event? Uh, I don't know, man. It was too many choices. It really was. It was a hard choice with the restoration, but I, I'm grateful. What I, I'm really happy with the decision we made with the resto, with the Mini. Mm. Um, I mean, look, you know... I, honestly, I, 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 it was hard to pick. It was such good diversity. There was some really cool shit there. So, I mean, fuck, I don't know. Gun to my head. Oh, shit. I, I, I'd probably say... Oh, fuck, I can't. I Honestly, I don't know. I mean, there was, I love the 550 Marinello, which is, uh, what's his name's car? From, from the rally, uh, from yeah. Rally. Yeah, yeah he's a manual yeah. 550 I mean, Marinello. That, that's, that's a I beautiful mean, car. That, that's just a great car. And Tour de France Blue. I mean, that's just a beautiful car. Um, uh, you know, the, the, is it Patrick, is it? Or Andrew with the 300 SL going? 300 SL, yeah. I mean, yeah. That, that, I mean you know, that, that's just, that's just, that's just gold, you know what I mean? Um, I mean, I'd hate to say it, and it sounds like I'm, but the XJ220 was probably the steal of the show. It definitely was up there. It, it honestly definitely was, was up there. Even, I yeah. mean, Patrick was saying, I mean, like, that, that, sorry, Peter was saying, I mean, that, 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 the amount of people that he was getting, like, the feedback that he got from the public about us was fantastic. It was yeah. very humbling to, and, and again, very grateful that people, I guess, like what we do and, and mm. like what we're doing, which which is fantastic, and, yeah. and we're very appreciative of that. And and he said the XJ220, mate, people were really, really commenting on that. just don't see them. I, I guess, and that's the thing, you know what I mean? Like, I've, mate, I've fucking been around one for the last 10 years, so yeah. I suppose for me it's just yeah, yeah, yeah. nothing. Yeah, forget that. Um, yeah. But, yeah, so... I, I, I don't know. I'd have to say, oh, fuck, I don't know. I'd have to say maybe the, I mean, there was a beautiful 356 there too. Um, you know, oh, fuck, I, I love the Taranas. I mean, fuck, I love that WB Statesman. I mean, that car around the back was grass. Yeah, the factory sunroof and the bronze. We saw them driving back. I mean, I love that. I mean, see, I can relate more to that WB Statesman because my mate had one when we were yeah, at school. Yeah, I remember yeah. his dad got one back in 80. Three or four, and it was like, yeah. fuck, this is gross. So, I don't know, brother. I, I can't. I can't really say. Honestly, I, I can't. There was okay. some really, really good cars there. It was tough to pick. It was. Yeah. And you? If I had to drive away in anything from that day um, to take home, it'd be that green 911 Touring, GC3 Touring with the bronze oh, wheels, the uh, The one that Porsche brought? Yeah. Oh, but see, to me, that's like, fuck, what's oh. – that's – you know, that's car. I mean great oh awesome car fuck awesome car awesome daily but daily yeah but I don't know I mean like that's just to me a road car it is it is it's definitely not as special as something like the XJ220 but that's why I look at that is 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 you know like that's why in a way I suppose the Michelago yeah I, that I, would be my peak if it was there the Michelago but see I'm actually glad we brought the the Viper because the Viper Me was too. more theatre. Yeah, I agree. I mean, the, I mean, look, people will go, "Fuck off, Moose Logan's fucking crazy." Okay, maybe that's just our immune kicking in. I don't maybe. know. I don't maybe. know. Maybe it is. I mean, look, we are. We do get fuck. I mean, we're walking past fucking cars that everyone's pulling their dicks over, and we're like, "Oh yeah, that's cool. Yeah, whatever." Yep. Um, but again, I don't know. I. I too many yeah, to too, choose from. Honestly, too many. It was great. It was yeah. great. Obviously, we've already committed to next year. We're Beautiful. definitely going to be there next year. Beautiful. Might even have a little bit more bigger display, um, but it doesn't matter. You know, it's just it's the quality, not the quantity. You know, exactly so, right. So, um, and and that was pretty manageable considering. I mean, we only had like Stephen wasn't there, JP wasn't there, Funny wasn't there. No, it's just a few. So of it was, us, wasn't yeah. the whole crew. It was just me, you, Liam flew it's a good in. Good thing that Liam was here. Thank oh. And I knew it in my heart. That's why I said you're fucking got to come over, man. Yeah. For this, I just it just worked out well. Obviously, Alan, Alan's one of the new guy, young guys to joined us and helping us on board yep. um there's a good family friends good kid he's he's, he's joined on so he, he, you'll see him here from time to time in between uni and that um doing a bit of overall so but yeah no like i said we, we managed it pretty pretty easy it was pretty good it was good yeah it wasn't it was difficult yeah so um no it was great great event and there's no other car apart from what the fuck that uh, car uh, um the new motor 
Classic in oh, yeah. October, Whatever November. That is. I still don't know anything what's going on. I, I'm not deciding not to look. Yeah, um, yeah. Someone rang me up asking me if we could want to be involved in the, the JDM section of it. Right. And I just went. You rang the wrong place, mate. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, yeah. I mean, we obviously we know what we know about the team and the people that are involved in well, that because together. that fucking idiot Jack Quinn's involved I think fuck up but all even, over. even with that aside I've got a few mates in the journalist world one of whom we had on the podcast yeah yeah um, yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. Uh, I had a few people messaging me when they had that launch night for, which for we the didn't event, go yeah and they were just going do you know anything about this like I just got into this launch event and it seemed very shady like mm. they just, mm. just just didn't quite seem right like they're talking it's about sad this- you know because we really need this we need a car show I think the boys at the uh, um, fuck what's the fuck uh, Craig and that uh, down in the road at uh, uh, the, the, the valet whatever the fuck the storage. Oh, they're yeah, doing some yeah. other car Crash show, they're some doing, motor show. Yes. They're calling it the motor show or yes. something other. Oh, they are too. Yeah, yes. and I think they're trying to get get going. So look, it'd be good if the boys that do something cool. like that. That could be cool. That could be good. Somewhere out, maybe we might even get involved in this one this time because I know mm. they've asked in the past. So it really wasn't our thing. Yeah, theirs is definitely sort of a bit stuff. more of like a Geneva motor show style, like a proper motor show. Theirs isn't. No. Yeah, 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 because no, it was the in J- the exhibition centre. No, that was the jdm sort of the Yeah, thing, yeah, Euro yeah, versus think, JDM. Yeah. But still, was it, was, it was proper stands. Oh, and, yeah, yeah, and, sorry. So yeah, I'm, retailers I'm, and all that sort of stuff. This new one that they're looking at doing. So, look, let's see. We, I mean, we need we need a car show, man. That's why the mailing road, I think, went off so well because it did. we're just not having anything at mm. the moment. You know what I mean? I mean, they had that EV fucking thing, which last, I think it was meant to go for four days. It probably only went one day. <laughs> um with the fucking stupid flying car and just stupid shit like that. Right. You know what I mean? Like a flying car. Right. Good luck. Mm, yeah, I'm sure you'd be selling one of those. Um, <laughs> um, and 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 EVs, like I think there was 10 people there and they were the cleaners. I mean, like, <laughs> honestly, fuck. I mean, like, I couldn't think of anything fucking worse. Oh, God. I'd rather just fucking run my nails down a blackboard. So... <laughs> Um, yeah, again, um, someone sent me a video of someone that sent him a video that was there and it was like, spot the public, honestly. Yeah, right. Seriously, I mean, like, I, from what I just saw, I was like, now, I can't, yes, I can't say fucking hate electric vehicles and I want nothing to do with them, but hang on, there's no prick at the fucking show. Yeah. You know what I mean? And whoever we were there, we're just fucking having a look because I've probably got something to fucking kill. You know what I mean? I think they, I don't think they charge. If they did, no one would have turned up. Yeah. So I think it would have been free entry. Maybe just grabbing people to come in. Yeah. Uh, I don't big, know. So big problems in the electric space. <laughs> big problems. <sighs> yeah. Anyway, so um, yeah, we need that to work. And I don't know. Like I said, I don't know anything about. A few people asked me about the fucking whatever the what's it fucking called? Cars and classics or something shit like that. The Which one? one? The, the Craig Finn one? Or no, the, no, no. That one, they, they're just calling it, I think, just motor, the motor Show, show yeah. or some shit like that. But the fucking, the, 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 the new motor class got no idea. I, I, I'm, yeah. I'm just not looking. Yeah, no, I think it's just going to be. Yeah. So, yeah. anyway, so, yeah, look, like I said, Marley Road, we've got nothing else, nothing coming up then. No. No, no, a bit no. quiet for a bit. bit quiet yeah, which bit. is good, yeah. actually. Yeah, no, we need it. We need to fucking <laughs> we focus need it. and do some fucking deals and we business and just get on with it. But, um, we're going to go to New Zealand, hopefully. Got a few things over the next week, a couple of weeks. We're just going to tidy up a few things. Then, obviously, we'll make some big announcements once they're all done and lots of yeah. shot to go on a couple of things. But in saying that, well, I mean, just taking its course. But yep. then, hopefully, then, yeah, probably in about a month, I was hoping we can go to New Zealand. We're saying go and do some content, do some stuff. There. Liam wants to drag me over there in yeah. November for this rally. Rally, that's yeah. the thing. So probably because, yeah, because September, where are we now? August, aren't we? August. So, yeah, so... I think, um, yeah, it's got a bit on anyways. So we're planning on seeing if we can do a big cars and coffee here before the end of the year, as we said. So we've got a couple of private events, which obviously private, they're, 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 they've contacted us, a couple of car clubs, big clubs. Well, you know, they're still good. I mean, as long as there's 300 plus people here yeah. for the Porsche one. Um, but yeah, we're, we're, we're planning on doing one, but we'll keep you in the loop. Yeah. Hundred percent, hundred percent. So one of the other things we got up to this week <coughs> after our fun. Oh, you did Halebury, didn't Halebury. you? Halebury. So Halebury College, for those of you who don't know, 
um, excuse me, is one of the most prestigious public schools in the state. Um, in the okay. country, actually. Big five figures per year per student. Just, yeah, proper money, private right. school. Right. Um, yeah. Which uh, Shawnee Boy went to. Nah, nah. <laughs> As I said, mate, um, I don't know, fucking something about the uh, Asian culture. You send your kids to private schools. So my dad tried forever to get me into, and obviously we didn't come for money, so it was a big thing for my dad to send me there. But I went there for three years and I got suspended and I fucking stayed there. I get, Not the I, right fit. Mate, I got the cane. <laughs> mate, I was a fucking rat bag, mate. Fuck. Anyways, so because I was there, somehow, I don't know how the fuck my dad got me in there. I don't know how the fuck he paid for it. But he, anyways, we got in there. But then Stephen got in automatically. Because yes. I was an old boy, technically. Yeah. So Stephen went there um, as well. But because we're old boys, so to speak, um, we, uh, you know, we got association with the with the school and uh, yeah, alumni and everything. Else. Uh, yeah, all that sort of shit. So, um, I think everyone fucking became doctors and fucking lawyers, and I became a fucking car dealer. So, <laughs> so, um, I think there's a couple of blokes there that are involved in Toyota or some shit like that. But obviously, we're the only ones with a bit of fucking eye candy. Yeah. So. Stephen's more involved because he did a lot better things I didn't. I just fucked around too much. But he's more involved with the school activity and so on. So in saying that, they contacted and, you know, said, hey, look, maybe we can do some stuff. And look, it's good branding. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, I'm going to work with the school, you know, work with the school that, you know, yeah. we went to. I can't go to fucking Dandy or Scoresby. The fucking cars will get fucking hooked. So, <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> oh, I fucking would. <laughs> oh, my God. Imagine fucking rocking up to my old fucking Scoresby High School. In public schools. Oh, for fuck's oh, sake. But this thing, fuck it, anyways. So, yeah, you guys went, Liam, Nico, and Ilhan. We took the 675 LT and the 968. Yeah, Yeah. took the M3, but we sold that, so we thought that we'll take the 968. Anyways, you guys did a bit of an overall car maintenance, how you do it. Not that these pricks have a little fucking 675 first car, but yeah, the 675 was more. Oh, you never know, keep the kids engaged. Um, yeah, it's always the the 968 was good because that you know, normal front engine layout, it's got all the right bottles in the right places and the dipsticks and and all that sort of stuff. So, we can show them how to check all of that. Um, 675, all we really did was tire dates and pressures and tread depths and that yeah, sort of stuff yeah, on that car. Yeah. And brakes, because the, the wheels are so tiny. It's a great car to have a look at how you oh, actually look at brakes on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, big carbon brakes. Um, so, yeah, that was awesome. I mean, it was really, really good to be able to come into a bunch of school kids who had chosen to be there. So, yeah, obviously, true. and interesting cars yeah. from the get-go. Um, and impart some of the information that is really important for car ownership that schools just don't teach you. No, they don't. Um, and they so it was don't. good. It was really, really good. Yeah. We had to warm them up a bit at the start, but um, Liam had the great idea of running around and asking them what all of their dream cars and their first cars yeah, were cool. going to be. Yeah. And they sort of pepped up from that point yeah. onwards. And then once we took them out to the McLaren, they were on. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so you on. guys went inside first speaking. Yeah, they, they yeah. Didn't know so what we, was did, we did like a half an hour classroom oh, session okay, cool. just to run work. through the basics of- Stephen and that did it last time. Was yeah, it you and Stephen? No. Yeah, it, no, it was just Stephen. I didn't go last oh. time. So I didn't actually know what Fuck, he did. Stephen so did it on his own. He, he just sent me an email Fuck and said, he has no idea. Here's what I did. And I was just, <laughs> Christ, all right, here we go. Um, so, yeah, we, we did this little classroom uh, session for 20 minutes, half an hour at start, just to run through. Here's why car maintenance is important. Um, you know, when you're looking to buy your first car, a lot of these things are going to be paramount. Um, yeah. And mechanics try to rip you off all the time. This is something you're going to learn the hard way if you're not told. Yeah. And this is how you protect for yourself from that. You be somewhat knowledgeable in this sort of stuff. So we're just yeah, going to teach good. you the basics. So um, we ran through a whole bunch of just basic stuff, as I said before, tire yeah. pressures, how to check what year the tires were made. You know, so when you buy your car, are they 10 yeah. years old? Um, you know, oil, yeah. coolant. Yeah. Um, just some basic it's stuff. Basic, basic stuff. stuff. It's, it's important stuff. It is. 100%. It is. It is. So um, Don't turn the fucking, don't take the cap off when the car's running. I learned that very hard. Yeah, way. it's so just funny because things. So what we did was split the group into two. Um, I took half to the McLaren and yep. Liam Nilhan took half to the Porsche. Yeah. And while I was doing tires and brakes and that sort of stuff on the McLaren and letting them just ogle and get in it and stuff, um, <laughs> Liam was doing all of the engine stuff, the oil coolant on the Porsche, and then we swapped over and, yeah. and, and vice versa. And when I was at the Porsche with my group, we're running through the engine bay and the oil and the coolant and 
and you can't take the cap off the coolant when the car's hot because it's a pressurized system. Yeah. Um, after that, I told them, okay, five minutes, go around and do all the tires and brake checks. I want you to tell me what year they were made, what yeah. PSI they're at, yeah, you know, well, are the brakes good? Yeah, and grass. while they were doing that, the teacher came over and he said, I took the cap off the coolant when it was hot. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've all done that. <laughs> <Yeah>. ah. <laughs> uh, and again, no one taught me. No, no, it's no a, yeah, it was good. No, it was really, really good. Hard um, wow. it was, yeah, the I think bringing the supercar definitely yeah. got him excited and pepped up. And and then at the very end, we got 10 hats that we brought with us yeah. and we did a pop quiz. So we yeah. asked a whole bunch of questions about the stuff that we'd been teaching them just to see if they'd retained any of the and handed some hats out. It was really good. Yeah, good. A lot of the kids got fairly involved um, and we gave them a bit of time, especially when, when we were with McLaren, yep. to just sort of ogle and look and yeah. you know, just be car guys. Yeah. Um, and while that was happening and we weren't actively teaching, a couple of the more interested students would come up and ask questions. Yeah, so it was cool. good to see who was getting yeah. involved. Yeah. One of them actually stayed right around. When all the other kids had gone, he actually came back out of the class, came back and, and was trying to talk to me. And he said, he's going to bring his dad here. Yeah, and, cool. Uh, he was asking me yeah. about, you know, uh, he asked all sorts of stuff, things from um, – how do loans work if I was to get a loan for a car, um, you know, motorbikes, we should I get my motorbike Future license. Future you know, All He's asking all the questions. Yeah. So um, what what car should I get for my first car? Yeah, all that okay, sort of stuff. So they're really good, really, yeah. really good. Yeah. So um, yeah. it was a good session, good, good session. Liam liked it so much, he wants yeah. to go back and do some yeah, more in New Zealand. Yeah, in New Zealand, yeah. Because yeah. you leave it and you go, that's actually like- it's actually really quite cool. Really important information. Is, yeah. <laughs> well, we wanted to do a bit more, a bit of like a road safety thing or something you wanted to talk about. I guess it's a filming thing and kids and all that shit, which 100%. we understood. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Um, I guess you get it, the working with uh, kids thing. Yeah, we might actually, we might actually, um, Kylie at Hey Library still wants to follow up doing something like that. So we might yeah. actually go back and just do something specifically with the school. So, yeah, but yeah that was really no good. Fuck. So, um, yeah, that was uh, good. Well if done. anybody listening here is is associated with any sort of organization, school work, whatever, yeah, um, you want us to come out and do some stuff. 100%. We're more than yeah. open to the idea of doing it. Um, yeah. Obviously, we don't have enough manpower to do it five days a week for everyone. No, no, but, no. Um, no, 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 it was definitely, it was good. Um, good to give back to the community a little bit, um, excite some kids and, and, you know, teach yeah. people is really important stuff. So, yeah, yeah. it's good. Yeah, it was well good. done. Good job. So, we'll blast on through to Car of the Week. Uh, car of the Week. Well, we had a few cars in this week. Um, it would probably be um, the, the, the Boxster Spider. Yeah. Which is basically... A roofless GT4. Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, it's, it's basically Cayman the same D- D- DNA as a Cayman GT4. Yeah. But without the roof. And I don't normally carry Boxsters, but... Box of Spider or that style, um, yeah, or 981, that GDS, that was pretty special. That was green cool. one. That was um, cool. Yeah, great car. It's great an awesome car. car. Great it spec, is an awesome car. agate grey, which is a really rare colour. Um, there's a handful of them online. Ours is priced very, very well. Um, ours is the only agate grey. They're generally black or white. Yep. Um, so that's a really nice yep. spec. It's got the satin wheels. It's got the Alcantara and leather, not full leather. It's got the comfort seats. And it's got all the interior bits and bobs. Yeah. So we've also got a Special white car. GT4 in the showroom. Yeah, we did a nice and, photo shoot the other day. Didn't and we? we took them all out yeah. for a photo shoot with the GT4 RS as RS, well the other day. Yeah. And so we're hopping out in between the two cars and Liam was immediately like the spec on the, on the Spider was so much nicer than the spec in the GT4 because it had the sports chrono yeah. and you know, all the bits and bobs. Yeah. Like, such a difference between yeah. these two cars. Yeah, it is. And the fact that, you know, that, that, that you can, I mean, the roof on this is actually not too bad compared to the early gen no, spider. No, it's that was really not. That, it's thing. just not fully automatic. But as long as you know yeah, what you're doing, what you're doing it's a 45 second operation. You yeah. open the boot, you lift the lid up, you yeah. close the boot. It's really not Actually, that hard. Just two clips on the side, yep. little butt remote, release, push, bang, fold in. Um, it's actually not that hard. Compared to the previous generation spider, the white one, that was a pain in the ass, a bit like a Meccano set like the Lambo, but... Um, Nowhere near as hard as the bloody Lambo, but in saying that, this one is great and it looks good too with the roof up. It's That's, actually because yeah, it's got yeah, this really yeah. low, really low mm-hmm. speedster, like three, five, six, five fifty style yes. speedster yes. homage um, with the you know with the big mounds behind the headdress. So it has that homage to the RSK that style, and yeah, it's a great car, great car. So um, it's it's a one owner car. 
Uh, uh, again, numbers are not sure. Someone's saying there's fucking 27. Then I've heard there's less than 30. I don't know. So All I know is know. it's a very, very low number of cars. Less than 35. Yep. Let's call it that. Yeah. And, and I believe that's probably the only one in that spec with the Agate Grey because the majority of them were silver, oh, sorry, white, black. Um, I think there's two Agate Greys, or, but that spec, um, the way that is, that, that's just a bit of a cut. It's low Ks, 30, yeah. 38 Ks, I think it is. Um, and I've and I put it out for two ten. I think that's great buying for that. I car. think it is. I mean, there's yeah, fifty yeah, yeah. k's on there for uh, or forty five k's. Uh, sorry, fifty k, fifty five k's. Yeah, for like one eighty nine. So like I'm fifteen grand more for a far better spec car and a more rarer color. Yeah, and less case. So less case. Yeah, great car. Yeah, great car. So really, really, really good car. Two petrol head reasons why I think that car is really good buying, mm. especially over the. Four and the four RS we have in the showroom again, different price range, different yeah. cars. Oh. Um, the roofless aspect, I think, would make that a more enjoyable car to take on a mountain run than yeah. the GT4 with more the roof theater on. sound, more everything. theater, yeah. amazing, Fuck. amazing, yeah. and it's got the exhaust, the crackles. Yeah. It's just, it's really it the is roof is down. Car. It's fantastic. It is. And the second reason, <laughs> and if you know me, you're not going to be surprised by this, but when you hit the sport button, yeah. It, it doesn't turn on auto blip. I was going to say, it doesn't have the so auto blip. So with the GT4s, yeah, GT4. I've said it many times before, any sort of sport mode in the GT4, auto blip is on and can't be turned off. But the Spider, yeah. no auto blip. Yeah. Love, Love it. it. You've got to do it yourself. <laughs> yeah. It's just such a nice, it's just a really nice place to be. It is. It really is a nice place yep. to be. You just You feel good. And yeah, no, okay, no, nah, no, it's not a 911 as now they carry on, but- you have to give credit where credit to do. You know what I mean, and dude. It's ninety percent of a nine eleven. It's mate. you know what I mean. It's, yeah, it's 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 you know a detuned S or a Gen one GD three engine. You know what I mean. The nine nine one. I mean, not GD three engine. No, no. But it's well, that's a three point eight. The GD three engine. Yeah, nine nine one. That's yeah. a, that's a detuned S engine. Correct. Same displacement three point eight. But yeah. I mean, like it's it's such a revy. It is great. Just the yeah. talk on it. Like it's yeah. just. Honestly, yeah, great car, great car. So, yeah, we just got that. We just put that to market um, technically technically today with photos because, as you know, it could be a little bit of a week or so before we get the cars up online just because we the way we take the you know, do the photos and it's a long process. Um, but, yeah, so we put it up just to get uh, get a little bit of traction. Um usual stuff, you know. Oh, mate, you've got photos. Yes, mate, they're coming. So that's online now. Go and check that out. That's a beautiful car. Looks amazing. Looks amazing, the photos. So, yeah. Yeah, that's that's uh, a car of the week. There you go. Car, car of the, the week. week. Definitely. All right. So on to our questions. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, lovely. Thank uh, you. Again, I'm not going to bother reading out names. Yep. Um, we're over reading out names. So. Yeah, we could, we could get wrong. The first question, it's actually a really great question. So I've, I'm going to read out the whole thing because he replied to the Instagram story, which is where you submit your questions, Instagram stories. Um, and then he DM'd us with a full full written uh, list expanding on his questions. So yep. can you guys talk about car insurance for luxury cars? Can younger people test drive them? Is there any restrictions on when and where or how you can drive them? How much is it costing to insure a supercar that costs three, four hundred thousand dollars? Are all of your cars insured? Is it worth it? Is the excess high? I was looking to buy a car, but most companies don't insure drivers under thirty for yep. luxury cars. Yep. One company quoted me fifteen thousand dollars a cheap. year. That's cheap. So I'm very curious and cheap. would love to hear more. Good question. Um, I've dealt with it pretty much most of my career. Um, yeah. It's a tough one, isn't it? It's, there is it's, no easy yeah, answer. There's no answer. Yeah, exactly. Um, majority of this stuff here that we <coughs> carry, oh, look, the majority of stuff I've played with my whole career, under 35, it's 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 very difficult. Tough. But, but sure, there's so many young people driving cars on the road. Mate, I can tell you a fucking lot of people that don't have insurance. I know that for a fact. Wild. And I can think of certain um, 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 exchange stu- or foreign students that come over here, like a bit of money, yep. buy their supercars, smash them, don't have insurance. Wild. <laughs> Crazy. And just fix them. Ridiculous. Wild. So not all that, but I know of that's happened a few times, not once mm. or twice, a few times. I've even had my own clients who 
You what? You don't have insurance? Oh no, Sean, I don't. What the fuck is wrong with you, mate? You need insurance? What the fuck? Yeah. Oh no, I just if I have access, I fix. Yeah. So we call that self-insured. <laughs> <laughs> Too much money. But no, look, it's a hard thing, and, and the sad thing is, it ain't going to change. It's never going to change. It's never going to no, get. It's you only going to get worse. Yeah, insurance you're, you're, companies. You're, 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 the the age entry level is not going to get a lot e- e- lower. It's going to get higher, or yeah. the restrictions are going to get harder. Like this horse shit. Is it Adelaide? The supercar license shit. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So they'll implement stupid things like that, um, which is more just to raise revenue. But um, look, our, our, our partner with insurance is is Archer Insurance. Um, Anthony, actually, be good to get them in here. And, yeah. And yeah. We should actually. That. We should get Anthony. I was actually on the phone with him today. One of our. So um, he's basically underwrite. So obviously everything here is insured and all that sort of stuff. Test drives that we do any te- many test drives at all. Um, but like any, any dealership, you know, you know, inventory, everything's all covered. You know, God forbid something happens when we're out in a drive or we're doing something, of course, we're all covered. Unless yeah. someone hits us, then they're fucked. But in saying that, um, no, it, whether it's here, I mean, I won't let anyone test drive cars on their own. We just don't. Very rarely we do. Yes, there's a lot of dealerships out there that will just fucking throw you the keys and off you fucking go. We're not one of them. And... And to me, that's pretty reckless and loose. That's the fall in love with me, the puppy dog, you know what I mean? Like yeah. take it home and all that shit. Whereas, you know, a lot of people just abuse that trust. And Yeah. Um, yeah, so for me, no, you you got no fucking chance of coming in here and just test driving a car. Just not going to happen. And most places um, have tightened up because of the exposure, really. Um, and... It's just not worth it. I mean, the insurance excess alone here for someone to go on a test drive is no different. I was at Dutton's, it's 10 grand. That's the excess for insurance. Yeah. So generally that will qualify someone. I mean, some people have said in the past, oh, is that what your excess is? Yeah. Oh, I won't sign that. Oh, you're fucking planning on having an accident. <laughs> oh, no, but <clears throat> then, then don't worry about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's just the way it works. Um, but... Archer Insurance, he's been doing my insurance here for a long time. I've known Anthony. He's got a fantastic company, great team of people, um, very diverse in this type of portfolio of cars, and that's the key. You need a, need someone that, like I think we're going through Lloyd's in London. Um, okay. And we've got Lumley's as well. Because, again, at this end, there's only a certain level. I mean, if people knew what I was paying a month in insurance, I mean, they'd fucking eyes at water. Yeah, right. So, I mean, fuck, if you knew what we were paying at Dutton's, they'd fucking make their eyes at water. But in saying that, you, what do you expect? It is what it is, yeah. you know what I mean? But, you know, you go and buy a $400,000 car. It's going to cost a lot to insure. Again, I've had students that for Ferraris or Porsches or whatever, like – more Ferraris and Lambos, that's what they loved, um, and Mazas. Um, one one kid was paying fucking fifty grand a year. <laughs> that's insane. For, but you know, for a half million dollar car, no one's going to insure it. It has to get. That's that's yeah. what it is. I mean, what yeah. do you do? That's the penalty yeah. of wanting to buy something like Correct. that at a young age. Yeah, you might be privileged or you might be blessed that you've got that money. Fantastic. Yeah. But costs have come with that because you're an exception to the rule. You are deemed a higher risk. Uh, sadly, I mean, the stats are there. The majority of people who have these accidents in supercars are younger people. Mm-hmm. Um, granted, there's a lot more disposable wealth. There's a lot more m- people buying these supercars than what they were at our age and my age, at yep. that age sort of thing with that young age. Um, so, and a lot of them have no fucking driving talent whatsoever. That's the truth. Yeah. It's a fucking truth. Some mate. of them do, but the majority of them don't. Majority of them fucking don't. Yeah. They just <clears throat> um, Going fast in a straight line is not driving skill. No. Far fucking from no. it. No. Anyone can do that. No. Cruise control does that. So in saying that, um, hence, insurance will always be dear. Yeah. My advice is uh, uh, give Archer a call. I can tell you now, though, if you're at a young age and you're looking at buying something exotic, it's going to be very expensive. Yep. We have certain clients that have it in their name because they have a fleet of cars and the son could be a nominated driver. Correct. Yes, there's an, a higher excess. Yep. Um, that's one way you could try it yep. and see, then build your reputation up um, that you're a safe driver, you don't get tickets and that sort of mm-hmm. shit. Um, and, and obviously 
like anything, you prove your worth, and then and the insurance company will give you a better rating. As you, that's like with anything, you know yeah. what I mean. So under thirty five, very difficult, mm. very expensive. Expect it to be expensive, or expect not to be pa- yeah. get, uh, get covered. Nothing you're going to do about it. Yeah. So as a twenty seven year old, about to turn twenty eight. Um, yeah. I've run into this problem a fair bit, especially I brought my, my Lotus, even though Lotus is only a well, 60 I mean, no grand car at Well, the no time. one's under 40. Technically speaking, no one under 40 is allowed to drive any inventory of here. Yeah. But so, you so and the, Liam have an exemption. Correct. Because obviously you're heavily involved in the business yep. or partners or whatever the case, the so you have that it, exemption. The way that I do it, which is the second way that I'd be looking at, at doing it, um, of my suggestions is through a business or a third party entity that is insured in its own right. So because I'm not an employee here, I'm a contractor here. Yeah. I'm my own business entity with my own insurance. Yeah. So I don't need to worry about YTG's insurance to drive no. a car because I have my own business insurance, yeah. which covers my business activity. Yeah. So that's my first but suggestion. But regardless of him having that, he's also an extremely responsible person. And I've employed, a, well, he's not employed, but what I'm saying is I've had a lot of people work for me over my career and there's there's conscious and intelligent people and there's just dumb fucks. Right. And, and the dumb fucks, well, they don't really work for me, the dumb fucks would not really work with them. But, you know, you've got to also, you know, have the trust that you know, they're driving eight, 900 horsepower cars in the wet sometimes and it doesn't take fucking much to fucking lose it. I mean, they're running track road, semi-track road yeah, tires, yeah, yeah. Michelin pilot stuff. Uh-huh. It doesn't take much and they're cold tires yep. and you don't realise how fucking power comes on. Uh-huh. Um, so, again, it's got to be trusted. They know, they respect, and then that's where it is. But, again, like I said, his, his situation is different because he's a contractor, so he has his own public liability and insurances and so on. Yep, that's right. So that's the first the first option that I'll be recommending for someone who's young is is uh, go through either setting up a business or a private trust mm. um, and the car ownership and the car insurance is to the trust, not to you. Yep. So you don't physically own the asset and you're not insured. The business is in, or the, the trust is insured and owns the asset. Yep. That's the first way to go about it because then it's not physically your name on the product. So you don't have to worry about trying to insure your 15 year old because it's just insured for the trust. Yes. Um, the second option, um, which I've also done with cars in the past, is have the car owned and insured in someone else's name, someone like a parent or a grandparent or, you know, something like that, um, with a company like RACV who will insure anyone. Um, uh, regardless of the policy. You don't have to worry about naming drivers and only having naming drivers insured. Mm. Something like RECV will cover any licensed driver in your car. Um, there just may be extra excesses involved for young uh, people, which is something you can't get around. But the insurance itself isn't that expensive. So yeah. Because the insurance itself is the price for the 50, 60, whatever it is, year old that technically owns and insures Correct, the car. Correct, yeah. So it would be, you'd be paying their, their rate of insurance and you'd just have a... A pretty heavy Three, four, excess. five grand excess if, God because you're a young driver. Yeah. Yep. yep. So those are the two suggestions that yep. I would give to you as someone who's sort of in that situation. Yep. Um, but at the end of the day, it's something that you can only go so far at the end of the day. Yeah. You're going to be forking out money for insurance. It's yeah. Just- and I can tell you now, mate, the way they – you can't fuck a line, mate. You know, you've been DUI, <laughs> you've been pulled over, under yep. influence, you've cop speeding fines, your loss of license for speeding or whatever, demerits – I'm telling you, mate, they're just so hard. They, they just are. look at all yeah. those things. And, and black boxes coming in soon, It's yeah, which is terrifying yeah. in its own right. So what insurance companies are looking at doing and thinking about doing, yeah. we'll talk a bit more about this next episode, is uh, black boxes in cars. So in order to get insurance, yeah. they are going to say, we're going to put a tracking device in your yep. vehicle. Yep. And immediately they know exactly what speed you're doing, You know, yeah. have you been breaking the law, all this sort of stuff. Yeah. And so you know, what used to be... I'm going to go for a mountain drive and, oh, crap, we hit a, a – there's a tree across the yeah. road or leaves across the road or oil. We hit something. We crashed the car in a mountain yeah. road. Yeah. They go, black box, mate, you're doing 86 in an 80 zone. We are not no. paying to fix and your that's, car. Yeah. I, that's scary. Do you reckon that will pass? Do you reckon it will come in? There is um, – we'll talk about it a bit more next yeah. episode, but I things are happening know. in that – I don't know about that. But anyways, look. Yeah. It is I a, mean, look. Yeah. Knowing the fucking government, yeah. <clears throat> not good. Mm. Not good. So, yes, no, insurance, sadly, 
Tough work, mate. Tough work, but there's Tough a few work. options for you to Correct. think about. Look look into, um, see how you go with. Yes. So we're nearly at the end of this episode. Mm. And again, we barely touched our main topic for the episode. <laughs> which was? Uh, which was. So I'll quickly read out some stuff for you. Um, so the topic or, uh, was vehicle weight in new cars and it becoming a prominent issue. And the reason we're t- discussing as this- As in weight for the car to turn up, weight? No, 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 no. Uh, as in- kilograms. Physical oh, weight. Fucking, of the so, so the reason that it's an issue is because uh, a uh, safety report was published um, where they tested a Tesla Model 3 and it was blowing through safety barriers because the, the cars are now heavier yeah. than what the safety barriers were rated for. Yeah, fucking hell. Um, which is a problem, a serious problem. So it starts to open your eye up to all of the different effects that continuing to make heavier and heavier cars is taking in terms of tire wear, road wear and safety elements. Like, you know, if you if you run in, have an accident, hit the accelerator pedal, whatever, and run into the side of a building in a 1200 kilo sedan from 10 years ago versus a two and a half ton electric car. There's a uh, different result. Big the end result is very difference different. Difference in end result. And the same for hitting people, you know, whatever the case may be, hitting other cars, all this sort of stuff. Huge. So um, it's Never a worrying place story. that it's going. Never ending story. Never ending story. Um, and uh, Paul Marek, our friend Paul Marek yes. from uh, Car, car Advice, Car right. Expert, yes. both of them, all yes. of them. Um, he put out a video on the new Lamborghini Temamara, Temamara, oh, the Temara, which is a V8 twin turbo <laughs> V8 hybrid. V8 twin turbo, 10,000 I mean, like RPM. 10,000 so RPM, I mean. Curb weight. It's two something, isn't it? No, not the, quite that heavy, thank God. Oh, but no, that's curb a, that's weight, the, the new Lamborghini, the Hurricane replacement, is heavier than a V8 SS Commodore, VF Commodore. The new Lamborghini is heavier than a V8 well, that was almost, family sedan. That was one point something ton. Uh, the Commodore is 1.6. Yeah. The Hurricane replacement, the Tem- Temamario, is 1.7. Oh, okay, I said two ton. Fuck, we ain't far off. It's not far off, fucking, yeah. A it's quite not far robust off. robust person. 1.7 tons in a supercar. Wild. Wild. Oh, but it does 10,000. It raised 10,000. RPM and it does fucking zero oh, to 100 in fucking two seconds. It's still some of the other stuff out I there. I don't know. Of course it is, but they have to put so much power to move the weight. So here's the deal. It's got how many hybrid engines? Two one or something? One. Uh, one. I think it's one on each front axle and then the engine is real drive. Yeah. yeah. Um, but here's the deal. A Alpine A110 is 1,100 kilos. A Alfa Romeo 4C is 940 kilos. Now, mm. they're both small cars, mm. but not that much smaller than what a supercar should be. Um, and they are half the weight of what this <laughs> fucking yeah, Lambo but, is. I mean, but, they, but they don't really go that hard. An A110 is fucking All cool. I'm saying so is- Two litre engine. All I'm and- saying is if those cars are around a tonne, a Hurricane 488 spec supercar should be able to be- 1,400 kilos every day of the week. No worries. There is no need for them to be getting close to two tonnes. Because they've added the electric shit to it. They can't. (sighs) That's what it is. Stupid, stupid, stupid. (sighs) And and we won't even get onto sedans and the bloody... Right. So, Mailing Road. Did you see the Lotus stand? With the two new cars there, the electric ones. That's why I fucking didn't see Didn't it. even see them. So was he, the, Were they there? They were there. They had a whole bunch of cars. Just around the corner, literally right next to us. Where we had the Elfin. Yes. Was there electric cars there? Yeah. Fuck, no <laughs> shit. So you know how there was the orange Elise, the orange Series 1 Elise that was yeah. sitting sort of in the middle of the road? Right sort next of. to that was the two new electric ones. Wow, well, there you go. So there you but go. they had the- Fuck. They had the, the SUV, maybe. They had the SUV, which I can't even brain recall what that car's called. Is I it don't the care Am- Avira, Amira, or Vavara or something? None of those. Ah, oh, jeez. Electra. Know. Electra Oof, is the well, SUV. Of course it is Electra. And then they had the new sedan, which I've never seen before. That's just been brought in. Oh, the really? four door family sedan, Lotus. Lotus. Yep. Yep. Um, which is called the Im- Imaya. Um, and that car is. Over two and a half tons hmm. and is 200 millimeters shorter than a Rolls Royce Phantom. Phantom. It's huge. Was that there? Yeah. 
It's massive. It's like a bus. I can see it. It is I mean, insanely big. Even just the spit on it, see it. I don't. Where was it? I didn't remember. I would have <laughs> seen it. Like, I mean, <laughs> fuck. I mean, again, I'm glad I didn't miss it because I, obviously I don't remember it, but. I just saw them all lined up where we had the elf and I didn't see anything else Yeah, there. other side from the Fuck, elf. Okay, well, yeah, close don't care. to us. But, so was there people hanging around? Not really around the lot. Not the new lotuses. And man, it just just sits so wrong with me. It's There's no need to be that big. Absolutely no need to have cars on the road that are getting that heavy. Oh, my God. I, just I, I, not I, good. But see, this is the thing, mate. The heaviness... There's so much other factors there that you've got to weigh up. I mean, you know, the wear and tear because of the weight. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there's just, like I said, I mean, just the mere impact at 60 kilometres an hour as opposed to another car with the less weight Correct. and the yeah, factor yeah, yeah, of yeah, that yeah. potential ICF of internal combustion fire. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, 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 I fucking, mate, I... <sighs> Fuck yeah. That, Imagine the damage difference between that 2.5 ton of Maya and something like a, a brand new i30N or a Subaru 86. Mate. You know, half I, the weight. <laughs> that's the thing, that the absolute energy and force. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the thing, man. The yeah. force of that hitting. Um, yeah. Yeah. And uh, to me, it's more the just the, 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 the scariness of what happens to those batteries if they were to implode or explode and you're fucking sitting on it. That's a whole different thing, yeah. But that's the Electric thing, you know what I mean? Like, stuff, yeah. yeah, crazy world, crazy especially, world. Especially a lot of that stuff where you've got your plug-in scooter in your garage, and actually another thing's the fucking exploding and it's just, pssst, all the lithium the, batteries and- The guy in the elevator with the lithium battery from his electric bike or whatever it was, and it the, exploded in the elevator and he was just a crisp corpse. No, but that, that's what I mean. Oh. You don't know when that's going to go off. No. You're fucking going off in the garage, just plugged in. Yeah. I get paranoid fucking going home with the fucking, the, the, the battery chargers on. I'm yeah, fucking yeah, turning yeah, them the off. Chargers, I, yeah, yeah, I'd pack your paranoid <laughs> about that. Imagine if this joint was fucking, well, it's never going to happen. Never. But imagine that, the joint's full of fucking electric cars all on fucking charge no. or something. No. Fuck, and get insurance. Yeah, oh, good luck. Good luck. Well, let's get Anthony from Archer in and we will ask him all those all questions. All about those questions yep, about insurance. 100%. Let's do that. I reckon they're because be it's fun. a higher risk in terms of the potential calamity that yeah. comes with the ownership of one of those things. I'd love to know what the insurance companies that yeah, the we'll get says about we'll that. Get so that'd we'll, be interesting. We'll, 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 we'll get Anthony yeah. on. Anyway, yeah, we'll finish right, roasting cool. electric cars for this week as no, we do no, every week. No, nah, fuck. <laughs> but I mean, hey, they're roasting themselves, technically. <laughs> <laughs> technically, they're roasting themselves. Fucking <laughs> 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 oh, they are. Oh, mate, too good. Oh, too good. Anyways, all right, well, all right, thank, thank you very you. much. We'll talk to you next week. Next week in about an hour, half an hour. Bye. <laughs> thank you.